you are alive. Okie dokie. Does the picture look okay? Well, there's a black piece of paper with a blue pencil case on top. It's purple, but yeah, it doesn't show up very well on the... It's, it doesn't show up. It's bright purple, actually. Wow. I know. There's something wrong with the color, and I'm, I'm, I still am trying to find it out where it is. Heather! Oh, my gosh, Heather, isn't it in the middle of the night for you? It is good to see you, though. Hi! It's always good to see you. Ten PM? Yeah, it's my bed. It's past my bedtime, actually. <laughs> so yeah, I get that. But I also get not being able to sleep. Oh, goodness. Well, I am happy to see you here. I've got my, my Halloween shirt on, my bats. Oh. We're just going to wait until we get more people. Um, hopefully. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's about my routine, too. 1, 1230, 1 o'clock. It's rough. Then I nap. Sometime around, I don't know, between 8, 930 in the morning after breakfast, I'll nap. And then whatever, however long. Hello, Emily. Yay. <laughs> yep, I'm a little tired today, but this is this is something that that I'm really excited about this tutorial. I'm really excited about it because it's one of the things that I love to do. So, yeah, no. Hey, that's Mark. I know him. <laughs> oh, muffins. Yes. Ooh, what kind? What kind? What kind? Oh, my gosh, Heather. Yep. My kids made me an insomniac. <laughs> Pumpkin muffins. Huh? Does sound good though. My mom used to make this really heavy pumpkin bread and it was like, I mean, you could hurt somebody with that loaf. You know what I mean? And um, it was one of those quick breads. It doesn't doesn't rise. But, oh, my God, it was so – she add, added, like, a cup and a half of oil or something. And so it was really thick and heavy and rich. And I was just like, oh, every time I, I looked at it, I was just like, so fat. And now I would love some because I need the fat. But Oh, oh. Oh, you, my youngest son's name is Alex, too. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's a long time to have insomnia. One thing that I really hate, though, is being in the hospital with insomnia because I also have trouble getting to sleep. It's like my brain just won't shut down. So once I do get to sleep, if I if there's any like odd noises it'll wake me up. And in the hospital, there's odd noises all the time because I don't live there. So, you know, it's like every other little noise, uh, I'm bam. Yep, I ping awake, just like you said. Wow. 
Wow. He chose it himself? Oops, gave you a hint there. I uncovered the title. <laughs> oh, two thumbs up. Yay. Well, it looks like there's more people coming in. Alex was born, Alyssa, but. Oh, I understand. Okay. That's cool. Gosh, a lot of parents wouldn't be so accepting. Uh, I just, that's, I, I wish all parents were as accepting as that, you know, laid back about it because it's just the way things are. Hmm. Wow. Slow day at the office, huh? <laughs> That's what I think whenever the chat room is is slow and not many people are in it. Because basically this is my office. Yep. <laughs> Okay, it says we have nine people. Hello, lurkers. You are welcome as well. The jeans went haywire. Eh. I don't know. I look at it that it's 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 the way it's meant to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, my mom had. Four girl, four boys first, and then four girls, and there was a seven-year difference between my next oldest sister and me, and a fourteen-month difference between me and my next youngest sister. Oh no, I know. I didn't. I didn't think anything else other than that, Heather. It's obvious that it was meant lovingly. Yeah. But yeah, I just, I think about that and I'm just like, my poor mom, she had eight kids. How did, I had two and that was it for me. I was just like, forget it, no more. And every time I think about how many babies my mom had, I just think about, oh my God, how the poor woman do it. Because that's a lot of babies. She must have been pregnant. Like, she must have felt like she was pregnant constantly. My grandmother had 14. Oh my gosh. Mark just said his grandmother had 14 kids. Oh, your youngest is 13. Oh, wow. What a fun age, you know? When my youngest was 13, he was he was awkward and adventurous. And well, he's still adventurous. He's not so awkward anymore. But yeah, he was he was a lot of fun. He made me, he still makes me laugh. He makes everybody laugh, but he intends to. It's not like they're laughing at him. It's it's more like they're laughing with him because he's kind of a card character. So yeah, but. Eh. Wow. My oldest is 35. I can't remember. 1980, born in 1986, 36, 34, something like that. Anyway, he's older. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm old enough to have a kid that old. You know what I mean? I think that's typical of people, of moms. I don't, we don't feel like we're old enough to have kids that are that old. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, um, it says there's nine people in here and we've been here almost 10 minutes. So I'm just going to wait a couple more minutes and then we'll get started um, with the announcements and such as that. And um, Kathy, 
Hello, Kathy. How are you? I keep forgetting to put the music on. <laughs> That's okay. Here. Yep. Yeah. Got my trusty little creative companion book here. And the cover is, you can sort of clean it off. It's got this kind of leathery cover thing here. Anyway. And it's got lots and lots of pictures to color. This is from Ruby Charms Colors on Etsy. And I didn't put any links because I didn't uh, expect to go through this, but it's got pencil charts too, see that? You can put your pencils. Oh, it's got a calendar and it's got pencil chart and then it's got a watercolor pencil, gel pen and marker charts to include Neo Color too. If you're lucky enough to have a set, a whole set of Neo Colors. Anyway, but yeah, there's lots of stuff to you can have an index you can fill in. Awesome. 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 Lots of stuff. Oh, look, and it even has a 2020 calendar in it. I didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Anyway, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the October info. So don't forget that the well, the October info. The Spooktober Colorathon is coming up quick. And that is on the 25th, 26th, and 27th of October, starting Friday and going through Sunday. I will be on on Saturday, October 26th, from 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific time, and we will have some fun. So that's going to be fun. And then the 13th that we've got on that Sunday, the third on October 13th, we're going to do the leather tutorial, where Mark is going to uh, go over how to make a keychain. And if you guys find, if you go to the video, the um, description of the video, there should be a link in there for the Crafty Cauldron and Facebook page. And what I'm going to do is make an event for that leather tutorial, and I'll put in all the supplies that you need. I'll make the event early so you guys can see what you need to bring and kind of what to expect. Uh, yeah, the 15 Neo Color 2s, yeah, which is good to start with. And it, it lets you figure out, you know, what you can do with them and how they react with different kinds of paper, which is great considering the cost of the whole set. But, man, set of Neos, oh, my gosh, every time I watch Vicky, uh, coloring with Vicky, oh, my God. I just look at that and go, that would be so sweet to have that. But, yeah, woo, costly. So anyway, I'll put that thing away. And my husband has been super. He made this. Isn't this gorgeous? It's kind of a, a greenish gold color. And it's got a little snap thing. The inside is black suede. Isn't that beautiful? It's mine. I get to keep this one. I don't know what I'll use it for, but... <laughs> <laughs> and it's got a belt loop. I don't really wear belts right now, but oh, <laughs> well, he's selling these um, he, on the Facebook page for this channel. He's got a post and he's got some of the stuff that he's made and he's going to be starting his own side business for leather. And he's really, really good at it. I mean, if he doesn't know how he figures it out. So yeah, I mean, it's all hand stitched punches the holes, everything. And he's kind of a perfectionist. So when you're getting something like this, you're getting a really quality item. This leather is not thin. This, this is really nice. Not too heavy, but heavy enough. It, this, you know, there's that other dragon scale or dragon hide pouch in your store. Yes. So anyway, this is, um, this is mine. <laughs> 
But if you're interested, go to the page. Hey, Mousy. Good to see ya. If you're interested in something like this, um, check out the post on the Crafty Cauldron Crafts and Coloring page on Facebook. The link is in the, the video description. And um, if you're not already joined there, you can request to join or I can send you a request. Just leave me a note and let me know what your Facebook name is because some people's names on Facebook is different than their names on YouTube and Instagram. So just leave me a note on my personal account or on that page account. Okay, who has their pencils ready and their black paper? It's gonna be fun. At least I think it's gonna be fun. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. So here's here's one of the things that I wanted to show you, and this is what we're gonna be doing. Um, this is something that I did, it's called the last tree on black paper, and it's just white on black. Dusty! Hello, Dusty! And as you can see, I've got some really interesting details. This is a like little mountains with a waterfall. And then on this side, I've got like a little, and then I've got, and it's been spray fixed, so it's not going to smear or anything like that. But I did this one in 2017. But that's my picture. This is what we're going to be doing today. And then it's going to kind of morph into something else. So get your black paper. And what you'll need is you'll need two sheets of black paper. At least two sheets for now. Anyway, let's do that. Let's, let's say that. So one to draw on. And I thought I had a probably do somewhere. Scrap piece, that's okay, I'll just use this one of these. You'll need one as a swatch sheet and one as a, draw, a, a paper to draw on. Because even though you may have swatched your colors on um, a sheet of paper previously, Lisa, welcome and hello. <laughs> it's good to see you. Yes, black paper is awesome. I love it. Here, I was just showing this. This is one of the pictures that I did on black paper. It's one of the things I absolutely love to do. When I when I discovered this, I was like, oh, man, that looks so cool. Anyway, okay. So you'll need one paper to draw on and one paper to swatch. Because as I was saying, if you've, if you've already swatched your pencils on something, I'm betting that it was white paper. So... What you'll need to do is, first of all, you need to see how the paper, how the, the black paper is going to take your color or your white color, because not all white colors are even are equal. And then you'll need to swatch over here, and then you can color over here. And I wanted to show you some of the options you have. Of course, first and foremost, you have a, you can use, I do that all the time. I carry, I hold all my pencils. Prismacolor, white. Yay, Prismacolor. And you can also use a General's charcoal white. This is charcoal and a pencil. You can use a white Conti crayon pencil. And I got this one on sale for $1.88, which was cool because it was marked down from $2.69. I got this like two years ago. Um, yay, Blick. <laughs> Uh, this is pastel chalk, which is a little different than charcoal. General's pastel chalk. Okay, Lisa, no problem. Lurk, lurk and watch. And, and if you have anything to, if anybody has anything to add, any pointers or anything, um, speak up, put it in caps so I can relay it to the rest of the group or whatever if they're not looking. Because I know I don't know about you, but if I'm drawing, I have my head down and I'm not looking at the at the chat. Uh, let's see what else do we have? We have a Stabilo Carbothello, and I believe this is a pastel pencil also. Uh, 
This one is a gray, but I also have white and um, well, that's the gray too. I have white and gray, two different shades of gray. One, one, it looks like it's a little bluer than the other. So those are your options. You can, you can, you do this technique with anything like that. You can use any brand of white, any brand of white colored pencils. You can use um, Black Widow, um, Polychromos, you know, Derwent, whatever. You can use a watercolor pencil. You could probably use watercolor, um, a watercolor pencil and then use water with it on this paper. But this paper does not take... Um, water very well because it's just cardstock. And the reason why I just wanted to use something cardstock and, and just cheapy right now is because we don't, hey, Victoria, we don't need to make a masterpiece today. All we're gonna be doing is is um, discovering a technique. And if you haven't ever used white on black, it's a little bit different and it's a lot of fun. Okay. Black watercolor paper is just fine, Cappy, just fine. You're going to want to have a very sharp pencil, though, so keep your sharpener handy and your little trash can, whatever you have there. So sharpen up your pencils, and we're just going to draw in, we're just going to draw a tree. And, yes, this is a spooky Halloween tree type of thing. Woohoo! Yay, October. And um, what I want to do is just start by establishing the tree because the tree is going to be in the foreground. So we want to establish our foreground tree and then we're going to draw around it. Now, if that's not, if you're not comfortable with that, you can do it either way. You can go, you can draw your horizon line and your background, but because we're drawing white on black and if you're going to erase, you really can't erase. What you have to do is use a black pencil over top and it may, it, because of, if you're, well, if you're using a wax-based pencil, it's going to show the wax shine. So that's why I recommend working from the foreground to the background. Oh, thank you, Dusty. I love it, too. I, I love my bats. When we moved into this house a few years ago, we were going to put a bat box out in the front yard. And we just never got around to it. But I still would like to because there's a whole lot of those, you know, those little tiny bats. And early summer, well pretty much all summer, um, right at dusk, they'll come and they'll swoop around and they'll, they'll get the bugs out of the air. And it's so cool to watch them because you think there's no rhyme or reason to the way that they're flitting about, but man, are they cool. And then we also have nighthawks, which are really cool. They're like little, I don't know, they've got really a long wingspan and they're, they're not so little actually. They're probably about as big as a, a small, falcon or maybe a medium falcon but they swoop and dart and you they're just amazing the way that they can change directions just like a bat it's so cool okay so what, what i want you to do is find your white pencil and give it a good sharpen and then i want you to on your swatching sheet just go over your swatching sheet and kind of explore how your your pencil is going to go on the paper like put down a light pressure line harder pressure line, harder pressure line, and see what happens. See what how your paper and your pencil are going to interact. Because if you're, if you're white, and I'm pretty much guaranteeing that it's going to be okay, but if your white isn't opaque enough, it's going to be really difficult to get a quality, uh, the quality that, that I want to show you. So mine is good. And I'm just going to show you, let's see. The Conti crayon, Conti crayon pencil are pencils are really cool. the The line that they put down can be very opaque. So if you look, you've got Prismacolor pencil here, and then you've got Conti crayon here, and it's a little bit dustier. There's a little bit more like crumble coming off of it, but you can see how you can get. A little bit more you can get control with this one too but I guess I'm used to Prismacolors so much that I color with Prismacolors and I'm like you can see how you can get more control but it's not true you can get control out of any pencil that you're using it just depends on how heavy you handed you are with it so 
Yeah, but there's that. And then the pastel, of course, is going to react just like pastel. Let's see. This is charcoal, which is a, a lot scratchier. And the charcoal, of course, is going to smear a little bit. So in order to, let's see, there we go. In order to avoid a smearing, let's see. There we go. I'll just shade that a little bit. In order to avoid smearing, we're just going to use right now the Prismacolor. So yeah, make sure your point is, is pointy. You're sharp. Make sure your pencil is sharp. And what we're going to do is, if you look at this one, the trunk, the trunk is only this long. I mean, the basic part of the trunk is only this long. And then there's roots. And then there's branches. So it's like a third of the tree is, is trunk. So all I want you to do is draw like, and you got to establish your light source too, because that's really important when you're working white on black. Um, it's easier, it's better, and it, it looks better. It's more effective as far as light source direction and, and the way that your shading goes. Um, it, it's better if you choose a direction that your light is coming from. As, I, as I've done with this one, you can tell immediately which way the light's coming from. It's coming from over here. It's shining in here. So what I want you to do first, if, first of all, is pick a spot like in the third middle, in the middle of your page, the middle third of your page. And just draw like a squiggly line up and another squiggly line. And it doesn't even have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to be, you know, any, just squiggle Two squiggly lines that are going to represent your tree trunk. Okay. Now, if you don't want a bunch of roots sticking out like in this tree, then you don't have to do that. Um, you can instead, you can make like a rocky outcropping, which may be easier. But you'll have to remember you're still going to have to put in your highlights to establish your highlights and shadows. So, um... I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do like a couple of scraggly root things coming down. Oh, my pen, my pencil's already losing its tip. <laughs> because these are soft. So now I've got, can y'all see that? I've got my tree and my roots coming down. And then I'm gonna make some main branches. And don't forget, don't make it too skinny. That's probably too skinny, but I can fix that. I can just use that as part of the texture in the branch. So I can enlarge it. But remember, your branches are gonna be bigger the closer they are to the trunk and smaller and thinner as you go up. So I'm trying to block that glare there. And if you want it to look three dimensional even more, you can see how with this, I've got like, there's an overlap right here. Whoop. There we go. There's an overlap. There's like a shadow of the backside of the branch, but there's an overlap right here. You can try doing something like that. So instead of just starting here and making a Y, you're going to come up a little bit and go like that. And see how that works? Okay. If you need me to show you something and you missed it, let me know and put it all in caps. Kenny! Hello there. Good to see you. How are you feeling? So we're going to continue on with these branches and we're going to, you guessed it, branch out and kind of, kind of overlap here. Ooh, ooh. Probably too wide, but that's okay. We can fix that too. So my light source, just for, because it's the same in that picture, I'm going to say my light source is coming from over here. And because you can't erase, you might want to get some kind of sticky note. My light source is coming from right there. 
Yeah, I got these things laying all over the place. <laughs> I mark my books, um, my coloring books for pages that I want to color with these. And I reuse them because the sticky stuff stays good. So I, I don't throw them away. I try to re reuse everyone, everything, everyone, every one of them. Oh, I don't want to stick my nose in there. Okay. So, Kenny, do you want us to wait for you to catch up? Oh, you don't get the little sticky notes like that? That's kind of a bummer. Well, these work too. These little post-its, because you can just go, you know, get a pen. You can cut them into strips too. Yeah, you can cut them into strips and then just like light source. There's my light source. Put an arrow on it. I know you can't see it very well because it's in red. I don't, I just picked up the red by accident. But anyway, I'm just going to use that sticky note. And I'm going to put this back on here because I could use it for something else. <laughs> hey, frugal. Go ahead. I can watch back. Okay. Okay, Kenny. Awesome, Mark. She heard you, I think. Mm. So, okay. So we're just going to give, make like this basic tree shape thing and put a bunch of branches on. We don't want to go too far out because remember, you're going to have to highlight all of the branches. All of these branches are going to get highlighted. You can also do a, a really effective snowscape like this too. Because what you'll do instead of just doing a tree with highlights, you'll do a tree or whatever, a barn or a, a fence and a plant or whatever you're drawing. And then you can just draw like, instead of having just a branch, you'll be doing a branch and then the snow is gonna be laying on it. So you'll, you'll draw in like the snow laying on it. And that's really a poor example, but you, you get what I mean, right? So just continue on and make your little branches and don't worry about if you do something that looks like a mistake just keep going because we can there isn't much we can't fix okay some of the branches are going to be coming from behind so it's going to look like they're just appearing out of the trunk <laughs> and we're going really light not super light but light enough that that we're not wearing our point down too much yet And a great thing about this technique is when you overlap, because it's going to cast a shadow, my focus is playing with me now. And if, if something happens where you guys can't see, please let me know, okay? <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Kenny. You're welcome. Dark blue paper. Oh, yeah, Victoria. That would look so nice. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to try that. I just love doing the black, on, the white on black so much. So anyway, so say you've got this branch here. Okay, because we do. <laughs> but, and you want to overlap, you just bring the branch up and then skip that part and then continue on. Now I've got this branch coming under this branch and going over that branch. So you can see it right here how I just stopped drawing the line and then I just stopped drawing this one. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have a shadow being cast. And if you don't draw anything in that space, it's going to look like a shadow is being cast because of the black paper. So it's already, oh man, Heather, I'm sorry. Um, check your settings in the, off that little, off the little cog on the bottom of your picture screen where you can see the, the 1080 and the seven, I think it's 760 and 480. You probably want it on 480. And if it's on auto, I suggest putting it back on 480 and not on auto just because that's what I do. And it seems to work. Hey, Pat. Okay, Pat. It's good to see you. How are you feeling? 
So we're just going to keep going. That's going to go behind there. And remember, if you make a mistake, like that's a little close, just grab a black. There it is. And you can go over it really, really lightly so there's no, you know, shiny spot. And you can just take that white out. And that's another reason we're not using pastel is because sometimes if you're using a pencil over pastel, it's going to smear it depending on how heavy you've gone with your pastel pencil or pastel chalk or whatever. So, Oh, that's great to hear Pat. Wow. Awesome. Okay. So now that you've got some of the branches in, I want to show you how to do, we're going to do the texture and, and highlighting on the trunk because it's really important. So mm -hmm. basically when you're looking at a tree and it's it's got moonlight shining off of it, you're probably, if it's really bright, you're probably only going to see something like this. See all those squiggly lines? Incredibly easy to achieve because it really takes very little skill but it does take some imagination. So you're going to be going like squiggly, squiggly. And you can make some of them harder, you know, more pressure. And as you go around, we're just going to do this section right here. You're going to lighten your pressure. So as you go around, the lines are going to become less defined. Now, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but if the moon is shining on a tree at night, a lot of the time you're going to see a glow on the opposite side. So you want that line pretty well defined, but you don't want it really super heavy. This is going to be the super heavy spot over here because my light source is over here. So this side of the tree is going to be super, super white but you're also going to have super dark shadows, which works really well because you don't even have to put those in. We're just going to put in highlights, but we're, our highlights on this side of the tree are going to be heavier with more pressure in your pen on your pencil. And you can go over the lines more than once. If it doesn't look right to you, And it doesn't even have to really make sense yet because all we're doing is, is creating texture and, and a highlight. But the funny thing is, is that as you're doing this simple little texture highlight thing, you can see like, you can see how it's, it's creating this wonderful, atmosphere of a moonlit tree. I have a friend when I was in college, um, she, uh, she was my belly dance teacher. She's a brilliant artist. Oh my gosh. So talented. Um, she was doing pictures in pastel. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a point here. She was doing pictures in pastel on dark paper, mostly black paper, but dark blue as well. And dark like charcoal and brown. And um, she did one, it was a, uh, the back of a, a nude man. And he was really like muscular and well-built. And all of those muscles were perfect, perfect. And I just look at that picture and I, I was just like, wow. And she sold it. She sold, I don't know who she sold it to, but it sold. So up here, and you can make it drastic too. You can go, let's see, let's, let's give you an example on this branch. So we've got our, our really heavy highlight right there. And then we're going to come down with another, you know, some more heavy highlights. And then you can go, oh, blank spot. You can do that because some branches, I mean, what if there's a big recessed 
part that comes in like this, you know, that whole part is going to be in shadow. That's, you're not going to draw that on this, in this case. Normally, if you're drawing it with graphite, you'd be drawing in all the shadows and leaving the white paper white for the highlights. So we're doing exactly the opposite of that. And this is not how I'm going to leave it because I don't want to. <laughs> but And if you think you've got a branch that's too skinny, like see how this one is? Let me get this up closer to the camera. This one, it actually is going, it's narrowing down too fast. But that's okay because I can just bring this part out where the highlight's going to be and make the branch bigger. So more squiggly lines, more highlights. Let's give this, let's give this some really heavy highlights right here. And here. So what we've done with the lighter stuff, ugh, crumbly, uh, is, is we basically just mapped out our shape and we're going back in and we're going a little heavier where it's going to be heavier, where the highlights are going to be brighter, and we're, we're putting in nice, bright, white lines. Now, when you come to the ground, you see how on here you've got, like, you can see how I've got this, where it goes into the ground. It's going to look kind of like that but according to how the slant of the ground is your your root is going to still it's going to have a like a round portion where it's going to go into the ground and then you can go you know you can bring your squiggles your texture down all the way to the ground if you want or you can make it smoother such as this and just make a lighter highlight and then leave this here, or you can put a black pencil over that if you wanna make it look a little bit more mysterious. Like maybe you don't see that part of it because it's buried behind the tree. So you can just, whoops, you can just lightly go over it with that black pencil. And what happens now is your mind says, okay, I see this guy. This guy's a root thing going down into the ground. This is another root thing going down into the ground. And your mind kind of supplies the information already about where the other half, the other side of this root is going to be. So you sort of see it in your imagination, even though it's not there. Okay. Okay, so we're going to continue on. And if you want to, you can make this look a little rounder by going like that. And what I've done is I've just taken my lines up. And generally, you would do this on all of them, all of the root parts. But you can go like this. And basically, I'm just making like little curves. Don't normally do it that way because I like this look better, but it works. You know, you've got a lot of options with this. You can go back over it. You can give it cross hatching and cross hatching is like this. Um, you guys probably already know, but I want to show you anyway, cross hatching. You can use it in pen and ink like this, 
and you can do cross hatching that's straight like that or you can do it like three ways and that makes it lighter or if you're using ink like black ink it'll make it darker or you can just do two layers you can do cross hatching like that and and ideally the cross hatching is going to be closer together than this but I, for the sake of a demonstration so you could see what i'm doing i made the lines further apart so you could tell what they look like so that's cross hatching and it's generally done with uh, pen and ink but it will work for something like this too i mean it'll work you, it's your art. You do what you want to do. However, whatever look you want to achieve, experiment with it. Figure out, you know, use a scrap piece of paper, do a sketch first, find out how you want it to look and what you need to do to make it look that way. So we're just going to keep going with these little root guys down here. And I'm going to do the little textury thing. I'm going to make my highlight down here on the bottom a little bit more drastic. And then over here, I think I'm going to take part of this out. Make it a little dimmer. That's good. It'll work. So we've got, now this one is a little different because it is on the other side of the tree. So we're, this one is going to have highlights probably about halfway over. And the, this highlight is going to be very close to this edge. This one isn't going to have really, really bright highlights because it's on the back side of the tree. So you, do, you don't want to press as hard, but you still want to get some texture in there. You could just go through light, really light-handedly. Just really light-handedly. And you, you're going to want to make that little round part on the bottom where it goes into the ground. But just use a really light hand. And then as you come up, you might want to put like one or two squiggly lines that, that are lighter than the rest. Because maybe that's part of the bark that's poking out from the tree further. It's, it's hanging out in the light a little further. So... So I've got this little V, a nice little V right here that's dark. I like that. It kind of gives the tree some a little bit more dimension. So we're going to go really light on this side because you, you might see some over here. And you might not. I mean, if it looks better to you to leave this dark side of your tree totally untextured, then do that because it's your tree. <laughs> so let's see. And here's where we had that little mistake. See my mistake line right here? I've got a mistake line right there. I'm just going to incorporate that mistake line into the texture of the tree and you'll never know it was there. So we're going to go see. Make this a little brighter up here. And you're going to want to rotate your pencil a bit. Just to try and keep that sharp point a little longer. And make sure that this far line, this far side of the tree has enough definition that it's going to look like it's catching part of the moonlight. Make it about paper. paper, paper. Yes. Uh, what type of paper? This is. Kathy, this is cheap Walmart black cardstock that I got in a package with black, gray, and white cardstock. It was just from Walmart. I mean, I got it a long time ago. <laughs> and oh, hey, Green Blazer. Good to see you. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you are popular. I hope everybody in this room is popular in this chat. Um, 
so uh yeah it's just cheapy paper um i don't recommend if you're gonna if you're gonna use if you're going to you make a work of art that you might want to sell or something that you're going to give as a gift, I don't recommend using this unless it's acid free archival. And I don't think it is, but I recommend using something that's like acid free pH neutral archival, um, like pastel paper, like smooth pastel paper. Oh, Oh, the cat just sniffed my foot. That really tickled. <laughs> She never does that. She must know that I'm on live stream, <laughs> brat. So yeah, um, if you're gonna use, if you're gonna make something that that is going to be a gift or something like that, you're you're gonna want to use better paper than this. But this is just a demo, so I figured it's okay. It'll work. It'll totally work. So we've got this now. If there's a branch that's facing like this branch. Let's say it's facing away from us. It's going to narrow really fast in relation to the others. It's going to look like it's, it doesn't make much sense because it's going to narrow really fast. But it's also going to catch more of the light because it's got a whole surface that is facing you that is catching the light. So that's why I went ahead and I and I go I'm going to go over this and make it almost all white. And then I'm going to go up here. And the little branches, I'm just going to go ahead and make all of those white. And you kind of want to go random with your branches like this. Um, tree branches don't follow any rules. You don't need to either. Unless you just feel like you want it to look very even, that's fine too. Create, you know, have fun. Heavy highlight there. I'm going to put a little heavier highlight right here too. So we've got like a little branch, little squiggly branches. Let's see. Oh, and this one I made too wide. So I'm going to put in I'm going to make this branch skinnier. But now that it looks like there's see how right here there's this branch and then there's a this is a mistake line right there. That outside line. So I'm just going to make it go parallel to the branch and then bring it out because I can, and no one will ever know it was a mistake. I got to sharpen my pencil. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a Walmart special. I don't know if you guys have Walmart where you are, but um, yeah, it's, I, I love bats. Bats are awesome. They're wonderful, interesting creatures. Oops. Make it a mess. It's what I do best. <laughs> Let's see. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing about the cup thing, guys, in chat. So, no, you know what, Pat? That's the great thing about working with this the white on black is that there are no mistakes, but I'm the kind of person that even if I make a mistake in a drawing, I will, it's like, I just let it go. And it's almost like working with watercolor where you let the watercolor paint do what it wants to do to a point. That's what I do with stuff like this too. I'll just let it go and create something out of that mistake. And that's what I've always done. I call it a uh, cream of stream of consciousness art because it's kind of like, it's kind of like just following wherever your art is going as if the art is an entity of, in, unto itself. And I've always done it that way ever since I was just starting out at like serious art at eight or nine. So yeah, you know, no mistakes. You just roll with it. 
leader. Same kind. Oh, I didn't know that. Thanks, Lisa. I learned something new from, from someone every day. Cappy, awesome. Sweet. And if you guys, if you if you draw something like this and and you want to post it on Instagram, please, please, please tag me in it because I really, really would love to see it. Don't forget there's a group on. Oh yes, and put it, yeah, put it on Facebook. There's a link in the in the video description for my for this channel's Facebook group. If you want to put it somewhere, you can put it there too, and then I'll see it automatically because I'm administrator. And so is Mark, but that would be so cool for you guys to post the stuff that we work on in stream on that page. That would be awesome. Oops. So here is my Instagram. That's supposed to be S Joe Beth Sexton. Okay. So if you guys want to tag me on um, IG, there you go. It would be so appreciated. So I'm just going to continue on with the branches. Green Blazer has a question. Green Blazer. Where is the question? Page or group? Ah, uh, shoot. Good question. Uh, I think it's a group. It might be a page. Shoot. I don't remember. <laughs> I made it and I don't remember. That's because I'm old. <laughs> yeah, happy accidents. Woohoo. Uh, let's see. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to continue here making myself some little squiggly branches up here putting in those highlights and the thinner the branch is the harder it is to put in texture, but that's okay because you wouldn't tend to see it anyway. And a lot of the time young branches don't have a lot of bark texture to them. If you go and you look at a tree and you, and you look at the young branches, they're really very much smoother than the bark in, on the trunk. So, so not putting a lot of texture in them further out is natural. It's, it's just going to be natural looking. I made another mistake and I covered it up. <laughs> you can go squiggly, you can go circles, you can do a knot like an, uh, where a branch has fallen off like a knot hole. Um, let's see. I don't, I've covered all my spots up. Let's do one right here. So basically, here, I'll do a, an enlarged one. Basically, you've got like a, a trunk. And let's see. So say this is going to be where your knot is. Okay. Your knot has like a lip on it. Like this. And then it's going to have an inner lip like that. And generally this part in here is going to be relatively flat. So if you think about your light source coming in, where are your highlights going to be? Your highlights are going to be here and here and here. So if you just think about that and you make your highlight, your really bright highlights there and then put in like a little bit of a supplement highlight beside that and let it a lighter one so it looks like it's fading out, then you'll have your knot. And basically it's just like a, a half circle with a half circle facing it, but it's a smaller half circle. So kind of like that. So you can add your little knot hole things and little embellishments on your tree. Say there's a bird nest up there. You can stick a little bird nest. And it's it's going to look like a little, just a, a wad of twi twigs and 
stuff because that's basically all they are. So you can just like hang one of those up there. Um, you can, if you want to make a pine cone, pine cones are relatively easy. Pine cones are shaped like, hey, can you bring me that bag of pine cones off of the um, TV stand? I left my, my Christmas pine cones up there because they smell like cinnamon. Yeah, I've got all this miscellaneous stuff laying around. Oh, they're prickly. Okay. Whoop. Hey, now. Behave. Okay. So we have a pine cone. And if you check it out, you can see all of these little sections where the pine nuts were nestled before they fell out. So basically, what you got is all these little things are little elongated triangles or half circles or quarter circles and with a little point on them. Well, the point you're not going to see from far away. Oh, thank you, Pat. Bob Ross. <laughs> oh, yeah. And now kind of you kind of do, Lisa. You kind of do have your own art show. I can't wait until you start live streaming. I am so there. And if you guys, if you guys have a um, YouTube channel, please put up your three hearts so people in chat know that you have a live uh, a YouTube channel, and they can go and and subscribe. So go ahead and do that. I know Pat, you do. Lisa does. Kenny doesn't. Doesn't Ken, Kenny? You have one, don't you? And um, a few other people. I'm horrible remembering stuff like this. Anyway, so um, so what you'd want to do if you're going to draw a pine cone is you're just going to do the highlights on that are bouncing off like this. So I'm going to do this on my, on my swatch sheet. So you basically, you've just got, I got to say, stop saying basically, you, you've got like this oval. And you don't want to make an oval out of your white because, like I said, if you're going to erase, you have to go over it in black and, and the wax shine and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So just make little, like, smileys. And they're not all going to be in line because trees don't follow rules. Nature is, is perfectly imperfect and random. Maybe put a point on a couple of them. So, yeah, you know, you've just got this little pine cone thing. There you go. So if you put something like this on your tree, only in, in smaller it's gonna look really cool because it'll look like a pine cone. Typically this, I don't know, this might be a Douglas fir evergreen, but I don't think it is. It's just a generic tree. But if you're drawing a pine tree and you wanna put a pine cone on it, it's super simple, super, super simple. Oh, Let's move that pine cone. I knew I kept those for some reason. <laughs> hey, Pickle. Aren't you supposed to be sleeping? Aw, oh, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Your group rocks, too. Man, totally rocks. It is a fun, fun group. So we're just going to keep exploring this. I keep getting friend requests from these people I have never heard of. I don't know who they are or where they're from. But yesterday, I got a friend request from someone. I can't remember her name. And I, I've been confirming them because I'm figuring they're from, like, coloring groups and stuff like that. I can't keep track of everybody's name. I'll remember their face, but I won't remember their name. And yesterday, I got a, a message from someone 
on um, Facebook Messenger. And I'm like, oh, it's one of those new friends. So I went to see, you know, what was going on, what they were contacting me about and everything. And, and I was like, they said hi. So I said hi. And she proceeded to ask me if I had heard about the publisher's, publisher's clearinghouse giveaway. And I was like, um, do I know you from somewhere outside of Facebook? And I had to ask her that three times. And the last time I put it in caps and she was finally, she finally said, no. Jill Beth, be careful about all the requests you get. I know, Kenny. I'm so, such a sucker. I know. But I've been, I've been, um, every time I get a, a new, I, every time I, I approve a request, I've been sending them stuff like, come to my page and like my page, go to my store website and all this other, because I mean, they deserve it if they're going to, you know, <laughs> and if they don't want to do anything like that, if they're legitimate, they're just going to overlook it anyway, like I do. Right. So anyway, hello, Linda. Have you been in, into the the chat into the live stream before? I don't I don't recognize your name. You probably have, and I just don't recognize you. So anyway, so she said no, and I'm just like, okay, um, are you trying to sell me something? And she said, well, I'm just trying to find out if if you've heard of the publisher's publisher's clearinghouse giveaway. And I was like, okay, I don't have the patience for this. So I blocked her. <laughs> so yeah, you know, if you're going to mess with me on, on my messenger and, and not answer my questions and you're not legit and you're just out there to try to sell me something, I'll find out about it and block you. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm ruthless. My God. Nice bright highlight here. And here, I made a mistake. See how this guy's coming down right here? Whoa, right there. This should have been left dark because it's going to cast a shadow. So I'm going to go in with my black pencil and really lightly... Get rid of that white line and start over with a new white line over here. <laughs> and then as you go up, it's gonna it's gonna come back into the light because I'll bet you 10 bucks this branch doesn't parallel that branch. It's probably like one's in front of the other. So yeah. I make these stories up in my head as I go. <laughs> Well, welcome, Linda. I am happy to see new people anytime. Absolutely. Pretty good, darn good group here. And if you want to find out who else has a YouTube channel, you can rest your pointer on the person's name and three little dots will pop up to the right of that name. And then you click on the three little dots and it will say, it'll give you some options. Um, one of them is go to channel. And if they have a YouTube channel, you click on go to channel and it'll take you to their YouTube channel. And then you can check them out. A lot of good channels, a lot of good talent. I mean, wonderful people. This community is just really wonderful. I love it. Okay. And I'm going to continue on with my little branches going behind and in front. Some of them in front, some of them behind. And I need to sharpen my pencil again because I'm getting dull. It's a good thing I got an extra white. And I highly recommend that, that you always have an extra white. Probably an extra black too. But anything that you use a lot, yeah. You don't want to get down to a nub and say, oh, my gosh, I can't do what I wanted to do because my pencil is too small to sharpen. That would really bite. Yep. So we 
we're doing this thing. Okay. Now I'm going to stop on the tree because I kind of wanted to go into a background too. And as you can see, this background, there's a lot of this background in this picture has been left to the imagination. There's a lot of empty space, but there's also a lot of really pale, very light lines here that suggest the terrain. And these rocks here, they're just squiggles that are suggesting the um, shape of the stone. This one, you can see I've got light lines over here and heavy lines here because that's where the light is coming from. And this is going to pick up some light, but not a whole lot. But there's still going to be a suggestion of the shape there. And that's why I've done it that way. Um, because there's going to be some light bouncing around. For example, these rocks, there's a little bit more light on the dark side of these rocks because there's light bouncing off the tree. So remember that, keep that in mind when you're, when you're doing a picture, think about where the light's going to be bouncing off of too. And not just direct light, but the ambient light, the reflected light, all that kind of stuff. There might also be colored light, which we're not working with at the moment, but Hey, Christine, how you doing? Um, I got some planned. So anyway, I'm just going to do, um, just a little suggestion, a very light line of my horizon. And I usually, when something I'm doing something like this, or I'm setting up a photography shot or something like, you know, that's, that I'm really wanting to be artistic about, I'll do thirds, which is kind of a rule. Um, you want to do thirds, third, one third land, two thirds sky or two thirds land and one third sky. And such as that, like if you're doing an ocean picture, you want it to be one third ocean, two thirds sky, or two thirds ocean and one third sky. And it's just a good rule of thumb, just a good rule guideline to go by. It's not a rule because as I always said to my art studio teacher, rules were made to be broken. And I did that a couple of times. <laughs> just telling my husband about that the other day. So, oh, thank you, Christine. I'm glad you're here. Definitely. Yeah, Green Blazer. If you, if you click their name on a um a cell phone, it it will take you away from this stream, I think. But if you're on a computer and you click those the go to channel, it opens a new window, which is highly convenient. Okay, so I am going to do something similar to what I did in, in my other picture. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start over here somewhere. So I'm just going to draw in a little low hill like this. And then I'm going to draw in a bigger hill and then make it go up to like crags. And this sort of looks like the Superstition Mountains that we see outside our window. And if you don't know what the Superstition Mountains are, Google it because they are spectacular. So anyway, what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to go lighter, heavier on the side that the light is coming from. And say this is going to be in front. This part's going to be in front of that part. So we're going to keep all of the drastic highlights right there. And then we're going to go like a little bit here. And then this is going to be on the back side. So there's going to be one there, but we're going to leave these light. Maybe one here, right there. And then down here. Oh, cool, Green Blazer. I didn't realize that. I haven't been on on my phone for a stream in a long time. So we've kind of got like this interesting lit up face. And remember, it's not going to be smooth. It's rocks. It's going to have like recesses and 
more drastic highlights where the rock is directly reflecting or, you know, dimmer lines where it's not so directly reflecting. And then maybe out front here, there's going to be another little outcropping that comes out and then we can just make that really bright. And then you can go like, because this might be all facing the light. Just make, you know, use the flat of your pencil. And, and as you go over toward the darker side, just make it lighter. But start here with a little heavier. So you've got, let's see. I'll bring it up to the camera in just a second. Let's do a little thingy down here too. So we've got something like this going on. So your mind is going to feel, you, can you see what I mean? Do you kind of get the feeling about what I'm saying about how your mind fills in the detail where it can't be seen. This is the, you know, there's something else there. When you're looking at a mountain in the moonlight and you can see the, the all of the parts that are reflecting light, you know, there's more to the mountain than that, but you can't see it. Maybe it's, you know, it's there. So just something like that. And then down here on this one, of course, this is going to look a little different because it's smoother. Maybe it's got like, I don't know, little pockets. But we want to make sure that we know where the back, where the front mountain stops, where the back mountain starts. So you kind of want to go heavier, like right around there. And then, of course, you've got your little back lit thing there. And it's just squiggles. It's basically just squiggles. You're going to maybe want to go in and make some of them lighter because you want definitely want a definition. You definitely want spots that are going to say, here's where this mountain stops, and that's the back mountain back there. But things look weird in the moonlight sometimes, you know? Things don't look the same. They look because, firstly, because your eyes are, are using different parts to see in the moonlight. And secondly, the, the light quality is totally different than sunlight. So you've got maybe something like that. So you've got your dark, dark halves, dark parts. I'm going to make like a little shadowy part back here. So there you have mountains in this background. And now that you've got that in there and you know where they're going to be, you can make your horizon line a little bit more definite. And then you'll want to do like horizontal squiggle things. <laughs> That's a technical term. <laughs> and just make it look like there's something between the tree in the foreground and the mountain in the background. Because if you leave that all empty, it's just going to look like this mountain is floating around in the back. Oh, thank you, Kenny. I hope yours is looking just as amazing. I'm sure it is. Okay, so we'll just keep that kind of and as you bring it toward the front, these highlights are going to become a little brighter because with distance, things are going to get dimmer and fade. Um, with distance, details kind of fade out. So you're definitely not going to want this back here super detailed. See, this doesn't have a lot of detail. It's, it's just up and down lines. And this is just pockets of black with pockets of white. But as you're bringing this up, you're probably going to want to make it like, you know, more defined. See, there's a rock over here. You can make your little rock. Remember when we make our rocks, we have 
we have the, um, and it's basically the same thing you did, you did with the mountains. So you're going to have like definition. And then on the back side, you're going to have a, a little line, a little dim line to kind of mark where that is. Maybe it's sitting on a little tiny hill. Maybe there's some plants growing up in there, which are easy to, because I mean, basically it's just, I mean, basically, I stop saying that because it really is just, if you're drawing grass, just little lines sticking up. So there's that. Where are we at? 120. Wow, I can't believe it's gone. Hour and 20 minutes already. Woohoo! So let's see. Say, um, see, there's a little city way back here, like in, in the other drawing. We're just going to sharpen my pencil again. <laughs> Dan! Hi there. Okay, make it pointy. Make sure your pencils are sharp. Make sure they're sharp. And another thing that I wanted to um, mention is that you remember we did last weekend, we did perspective. This is using that tool. This, this is in perspective. Now, granted, we can't say this mountain is this tall because this tree is this tall, scientifically, mathematically, because, I mean, it's random. But you know by looking at this that there is a distance between these two. Mountains are big. Trees are not so big. But because this is in the foreground, it looks giant. And we know that. So we're, we're creating a sense of perspective by putting this mountain in the back and this tree in the front and giving everything the light source that we're giving it. Question in chat. Question in chat. Time flies when you are teaching. Yes, it does. Paint girly, hi there. Could you show the other drawing again? Sure, I can show that. This is one of my drawings. What part do you want to see? I love it. I, uh, I used to love art class too, Diane. Oh my gosh. So yeah, there's my, my drawing. Oh, okay. It is called the last tree. So, um, anyway. So we've got all that going on. Put in a little highlight there. So we're going to do kind of a building back here. And we want to make the line as, as straight up and down as we can, unless, unless you're making a dilapidated building that's missing windows and having, and is falling down, which in which case you can draw a pile of rocks if you want to a pile of bricks. It's just easier to draw something straight and show you the advantages of the highlight and all of that. So, okay, so let's just make like a tall building here. Make my perspective. So it looks like a cube, but now there, see that we've got a building thing. But how do we make that look like a, how do we make this box or group of boxes look like a building? First of all, I'm going to take out my horizon line by using very lightly using my black pencil. Okay. And I'm not too worried about making my lines straight because actually, you know, this is a demo and I'm not going for a masterpiece. But when you've got, let's say this is three stories tall. When you've got your building like this and your light source is coming from this side, what's going to catch the light? Okay, so we know that this is going to catch the light. 
that. And we know that this side is going to catch the light. This top portion here is going to catch the light, as is this. And depending on how your building is situated and where the light is actually coming from, you may or may not catch the light in the fronts. And for, for the sake of our demo, I'm just going to say that it's coming pretty sideways, but a little bit from the front. So, and there's a reason why I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to make like this corner a little brighter, just a little brighter. And what else I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a door. And the thing that's going to catch the light is this piece. And then there's probably going to be a little here and these windows like this. And no, it's not even like I said, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make a masterpiece or anything. But you, you'll get it. You'll understand what I'm, what I'm doing here. It's just really rough. So you're building your windows. If you've got windows in the front of your building, because the light is coming from over here, shining down everything that is facing that light, all the flat surfaces are going to catch the light. Then if you've got something coming out, like you've got a windowsill, that's going to catch the light as well. So you'll have a little line there, probably going to be pretty bright because if you've got a windowsill, it's, out, it's, it's, going to pop out from the front of the building. So there's that. Then this one, let's see. I don't know. Let's say that there's a bay door on it, like a loading dock. So it's going to be a longer door. And that one is going to be same idea that loading doors have like a little thing at the top a lot of the time. So I'm going to make that a little brighter up there. And then they sometimes also have little ridges in the doors, which are going to show up, but they're not going to show up at the very top. And I can only put in a couple of lines because it's so tiny. But it's going to show up something like that. Oop, out of frame. So this has a little roller top. And then you can also go, okay, you've got like asphalt. Moonlight maybe is shining off of the asphalt. Because it can be shiny a little bit, but not too much. And... I think one of the pictures that I did like this, I put a little picket fence in. So let's just say like there's a little, that's where the asphalt ends and that's where the asphalt ends. And you've got like a yard of some sort. Okay. So, so now you've got a building. On this side, we don't want that side to look totally blank because as it is, it can be open or it can be not open. So what you want to do is to make sure that you are conveying the right message and using your highlights to the best advantage. You're going to want to like color that in enough, maybe give us some texture that it looks like there is a wall there. If that means making like intersecting cross hatching lines to make it look like there's, you know, some kind of texture there, then do that. If that doesn't look right to you, do another, just try another technique. So that's, that's really rough, but I, I hope you guys get the point. Hey, Tony, good to see you. Okay, 
so do you guys get that? You you get all the cool stuff you can do with, with a white pencil and a black piece of paper. And, oh, don't forget your eraser, your black pencil. <laughs> you can use this technique for faces, for, I mean, a lot of things. Anything, anything that you're going to draw, you just have to remember that you're doing it in reverse. Instead of drawing in shadow as with graphite or pencil, you're drawing in highlights with your white, white. Okay, something else I wanna show you. One of the things that I was working on is also on black paper, but it is pictures on black paper, pictures in color. And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you a couple of things. One of the things is something that I got from Ruby Charm Colors in um, on Etsy, and Susan Carlson is the is the one that does the artwork. Oh, thank you, Dusty. That makes my heart happy. Thank you so much. So this one I don't remember what it's called, but I love ravens. And this one was just a tester sheet, so I went a little crazy with the colors. But this was printed on black paper, so. We've got this. Now it's not all colored pencil. Some of it is uh, moonlight, um, jelly roll moonlights. Um, some of it is um, neon. Some of it is uh, Wink of Stella. Um, but the point here is you can paint with colored pencil on black paper as long as you've got the correct, it prints better on black paper if you're printing it with laser and not with inkjet because you cannot see the ink with inkjet. You can see it with a laser printer. Oh, Christine. Oh my gosh, I'm blessing here. Holy crap. Okay, anyway, so what I wanted to do was show you this because this was my tester page. I just, I just went totally crazy. And what, what you want to do, I'm going to get a, a blank sheet of black paper. What? Mark just gave me a look. <laughs> Dog. Dog. Okay. So what you want to do is you got your swatch sheet. You always need a swatch sheet whenever you work on black, because like I said before, you may have swatched your, your stuff, your pencils from here till eternity, but with black paper, it's different. For example, this is dark purple. You can barely see that. This is 50% cool gray. You can really see that. And it's funny because I was trying to predict which colors out of my Prismacolor set that I could see on the black paper. And I was like, when I was, when I was doing this, I was taking out colors and I was like, I'll just use this one. I love this color. And then I would go to use it on the paper and it wouldn't, it, I couldn't see it. And I couldn't predict which one would and which one wouldn't show up. So I was just like, oh man. I got to swatch every single one of these. And another advantage to swatching every single one of those is because every single one of your pencils is that way you can see what they look like beside each other. So we've got purple and gray and the purple shows up pretty well. This one's the purple. That one's the gray. They show up pretty well and you can barely see the dark purple. You can barely see it right there. Tony has a question. Tony asked the question, metallics. Um, I haven't used metallics yet because talk about unpredictable. Oh my gosh. However, when you are using black paper, if you want to use something that you cannot see very well, you put down a layer of white or something close to white, like a light gray, or peach or something. If you want to make it a peach base, you can do that. And then you can take your pencil that you can't see and you go over the top and voila, magic. 
you can see it. So you will have to, if you're going to be coloring on black paper and you want to make it so you can see a color that you can't ordinarily see on black, and I realize this is blurry and I'm sorry, um, just put your put a, a lighter layer base down and that'll make it visible. What I wanted to show you before I do anything on this is this is one that I am working on. Oh, there's my swatch. Here's my other swatch page that I was using for my my other picture. This is one I'm really getting serious about. And it's in it's in this book that I got from Ruby Charm. It's called Black Magic. She Susan Carlson makes these by hand um, about twice a year. She takes pre-orders because they're expensive and because she makes them all by hand. They're not published by Amazon or anybody. She she makes them. Or they're not created by Amazon. I'll, I'll put it that way. So she takes each one and she puts your name on it in gold, silver, or copper. I chose copper. And then she makes, look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? She colors the front by hand individually for each person, which is totally cool. So... What I wanted to do is I'm going to see if I can I can get this to translate through the camera because I wanted to show you what these look like before they're colored. And I think I can do it. She also gives you this little piece of plastic that you can put between your sheets and um, it comes right out. But you can so you can take it out and put it behind your sheet or you can put it in front if you think it's going to smear. But this is what it looks like when it's when it's printed on with um, a laser printer. I'm hoping that'll focus. Might help if I quit moving. Yeah. You see that? Huh? You might have to shade it from the top. No, that's even worse. So you can see the um here's the Raven one. Can you guys see this in, in chat? That angle works well. Okay. This is just the printed laser on black paper, laser printer on black paper, okay? Now, I don't know many other people who, who do this thing, but, but Susan Carlson at Ruby Charms Colors does this. And these are top-notch, top-quality things. Here is the picture that I am working on currently that I got serious about because I did my first picture on black and I got to tell you, the first picture that I ever did in colored pencil was on black. And it was years and years and years ago. And I did it for an exquisite corpse. And I'll explain that in a minute. But here's my picture now. It's seals and koi. And I've got it like faded. Which is so fun. But if you look up Ruby Charm Colors on Etsy you will find her stuff. She also makes uh, stuff on, on white and with gray lines and stuff like that. So, but isn't that awesome? Her pictures are so cool. So there's that. Um, I highly recommend these, but you'll have to keep an eye on her shop because I never know when she's going to make more. She's made, I think she's made two volumes recently and she's, thinking about putting together another one for the holiday season, but I'm not sure. Don't, don't quote me on that. So there's, there's that another. That. Yeah. That's all uh, Prismacolor pencils. And I, I, Oh crap. I dropped my pencil. Oh, I hate it when that happens. I, um, watch everything before I use it. I swatch everything because I want to know exactly what I'm getting into when I put the pencil down on my picture that I'm serious about. So yeah, I, I totally swatch everything. And one of the things that, that, um, I did recently and I wasn't going to show you this because this is the first one that I did. And I'm, I'm a little iffy about how it came out, but I took this off a tutorial on YouTube and I can't remember the person's name. It's, uh, Starts with an S. I think Laura calls her squish or squish, but she does these bubble tutorials. I did this this morning, and I don't know if this is translating well. It's a rainbow bubble. 
And personally, I think there's a little too much color in it, but I think they came out decently. There's a little bit of dust on there and stuff. But I was kind of in a hurry when I did it. It, it was a lot of fun. I love working on black paper. It's super, super fun. So um, what I'm going to kind of show you is how, how wonderful and how frustrating <laughs> this might be. I have neon orange. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I would think the neon orange pencil would go on black paper like a dream. I really, you know, I would think that. But check it out. That's neon orange. That is not very dark. However, take out my white. And if you put in the white really dark, but you got to be careful about layers because if you're working on cardstock, those layers, you, you'll get three, maybe four really good layers before the wax bloom starts. So you really got to be careful about that. But now I've got bright orange. Whoops. There we go. Gosh, darn it. Focus, you silly camera. Anyway, so this is the one without the white. And this is the one with the white underneath it. Shoot, I don't think you guys can see that very well because I can't see that very well. But anyway, it looks white. yeah. So this is Parma Violet, which doesn't show up. Doesn't show up very well. It shows up decently. And the great thing about working on black paper, another thing, is you can fade your colors. You can fade your colors out really easy. If it's something like this, that doesn't go on really dark. And then once you have that color down, you can come back in with another color. And this is lavender. And you can go over the top And you can fade that out too. But that's going to be more visible because there's an underlayer there. And I thought it, I thought it was when I started really, really working with the, the colors, I thought it was really interesting which colors would translate well onto black and which colors would not. And then um, which colors I could put on top of other colors in order to get what I wanted to achieve. And I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. I have an advantage because I worked on black paper before. Yes, green blazer, I thought so too. The rainbow bubbles, the soapy bubbles, yeah. So this is nectar. And that one comes through really good. Comes through really good. So that would be a great base color but it also fades out really good. Just lighten the pressure, just like on white paper. So I'm gonna put that one back. And it's the same principle as mixing color with, um, you know, on white paper, but you've got this funky added variable of the black paper. So I'm putting uh, Crimson Lake over Nectar which is coming out, I don't know, it's like fuchsia almost. But you can, you can combine these colors and my white balance is off. Oh, hold on a sec. Let's see if that helps. Uh, doop. That's a little better. So you can combine these colors and you can get, because of the black paper, you can get a whole new range of colors out of the pencils you've been using for however long you've been using them. And you don't have to buy a darn thing. 
you know, it's just, it's just a matter of exploring what you have. You see in the negative? Oh my God, that, that's awesome. I mean, not that you see in the negative, but that, that you can create something like that. Black printed books out there, Pat, I don't know if there are. But I do know that this lady knows what she's doing. So, yeah. Um, another thing that you can do is you can you can get um, really dark charcoal paper, dark charcoal gray paper, and print black on that with your inkjet, and you should be able to see it. But the thing is, with a, la a laser printer, it it's shiny, so it reflects in the light. Now, with my setup, my light happens to be just perfect. So I can see what I'm doing really, really easy. I don't even, I didn't even have to move anything, which I thought was totally awesome. But um, yeah, you know, I'm sure there are others out there. It's just a matter of digging them up. Let's see. There was an Ollie's a while ago. Rochelle, did you, did you find a black coloring book like this at, at Ollie's? I don't have an Ollie's, but I know what it is. Yeah, you guys, you know what? If you if you find black coloring books anywhere, um, hi Mark. There's two Marks in chat now. Hey Joey. Yeah, if you guys, if anybody finds um, uh, black coloring books anywhere out there in the world, please post it to the um, Facebook Crafty Cauldron Kit page because. I would like to know too, and I'm sure other people would. That would be totally cool. Even if it's not exactly like that, Rochelle, it still would be kind of cool to know. Definitely. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody was saying something about, you were saying something, let's see. Tony, I draw the dark areas and then a picture of all. Oh yeah, that's so fun. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so um, oh gosh, I don't even know where to go from here. I I wanted to make sure that I showed you the color stuff because um, it was just like a branch out of the black and white stuff. I've got everything in a stack over here. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> And if you didn't see the, the picture I was talking about, if you just came in, this is the, the colored picture I did on black. Hey, that looks even better with just this light on. You can see it a little better. I used uh, the Wink of Stella Metallic on this, but not like pencil. And some of this I had to do white underneath in order to get the, the colors to show, like the yellow didn't show up, but I wanted it yellow. So I had to do the, the white, Let's see, I'll point like this. This is yellow. I had to put the white underneath that in order to get the colors to show up. But the um, jelly roll neons and moonlights work really well on black paper. They're made for black paper, I think. Just draw and see what happens. Yeah, Tony. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, Rochelle. Thank you very much. It's just a test page. I was just kind of throwing everything at it to see what would work and what would not work and what looked bad. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it's it's super duper fun. Absolutely enjoyed myself. Um, let's see. You know what? I'm going to see if I can find that. Um, bubble tutorial. I'll see if I can post it here. Hold on just a minute. Ah, I think I found it. There it is. Copy, shut that window. OK, 
Okay, let me see if I can get this to go in there. The bubble tutorial. Enter. Did that come through? Yep. Awesome. That link is to the bubble tutorial for these guys right here. Whoop. Sorry, I didn't mean to make you dizzy. <laughs> it's only about 14 minutes long. And it's really cool. Personally, I wouldn't put so many colors in it, but it does look awesome when you're done. I would probably use maybe, I don't know, four, maybe five colors instead of she used, I think, 12 or something. But yeah, she drew the circles with a protractor. I drew my circles with a circle gauge. Oh, one of these dealy things. Which works just fine for me. I, I don't need a compass protractor. Compass. Your compasses, right? You're not a project, you're a compass. Anyway, so yeah, that's the link to the tutorial for these bubbles. Um, practice makes perfect, guys. It's super fun, but you, you still, you know what? This I am not super happy with this. I'm uh, really thinking about, you know, doing my own tutorial, but not with so many colors because that's just a lot of colors. And working on this kind of paper, I mean, if I was working on pastel paper or colored pencil paper, black colored pencil paper, it would be different because then it would the pencil would go on better. But because it's an, on cardstock, and that's what a lot of people have and what a lot of people practice on, it the it it three four layers and, and it's it was done. And she she does say to go light in some areas and really heavy in some places. So it's kind of yeah, I thought it was falling. Oh, cool. Like, why did it here? Cool, green blazer. Yes. Yes, plastic lids. Um, bottles and jars. Absolutely. You don't need to go out and buy a bunch of expensive stuff. Do it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, you know, um, gosh, I I just I think it would be super cool to, to see a bunch of uh, white on black and colored on black drawings pop up in my on my um, in the channel Facebook page. That would be so awesome. Oh, okay. Well. Um, We've only got about seven minutes left and I really have nothing else to show you along these lines. So I wanted to, what? Question. Are there any questions out there? Any questions for me on this or anything else? Oh, and if you guys have a, um, a YouTube channel, please put up your three hearts and let everybody know that you do have a YouTube channel in that way. And then we can all go subscribe and support each other that way. Joe Beth, hi. Got paper pad. Hey, Mark. Uh, I'm glad that you have black paper. That's cool. Do you? I hope you have some pencils that'll that'll work well with it. Um, we're getting ready to leave, or I'm getting ready to shut down the stream because I only have two hours, and it's six minutes away from my two-hour mark. And I apologize for that. Um, but. Um, paint, girl, paint yes, hard, paint girl. That that's just the way that we let people know that we have a YouTube channel, just by putting up three hearts after after your name. So, um, Christine C. L. Aldridge has a channel. Um, Cajun Sunshine. Uh, who else? Uh, Victoria does. I think Victoria does. Yeah, Victoria does too. Oh, no problem, Christine. This is, I love to teach. I absolutely love to teach. And then one of the reasons I love YouTube is because you guys don't have to pay anything. I don't have to pay anything. Nobody is out anything. It's just learning together 
and interacting. And I absolutely love that. So yeah, you know, anything, if you think anybody has any suggestions about something that you want to learn, throw them my way through whatever means you want to like per private message and Instagram message on the, the Facebook page for Crafty Cauldron, whichever way, just make suggestions. And I've got a running list of things that, that we're going to do. So I mean, we're going to do like, yes, Pat, we're going to do the water drop tutorial. <laughs> and we're probably going to do um, a whole lot of, I mean, definitely going to do a whole lot of other tutorials, but they're not all going to be art. The 13th, on the Sunday, the 13th, we're going to do the leather tutorial. So don't forget about that. And that's going to be from 2 to 4 p.m. Pacific time, same time slot as this one was. And um, I will post and I'll make an event on the, um, Facebook page about all of these supplies that you'll need. Hopefully I'll have the presence of mind to post a picture so you guys can actually see what you'll need because I know as artists, we are very visual people. So you don't do Instagram. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. You know what? Why? Okay. Why? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's okay, Rochelle. Thank you, Joy. I appreciate that. So if you guys feel like it, if you would, please give me the, the thumbs up, subscribe. Um, like I said, throw suggestions my way. Um, enjoy life. Color a lot. <laughs> Peace and love and be good to each other. And I will see you all on Tuesday from two to four. That is my next stream. We're going to be coloring some more on this. You can find this. This is uh, the Innes Guerrero Season of the Witch PF. You can find this at Innes Guerrero Art. I believe the store is called on Etsy. If you would like to color along. This is what I have so far. I've been taking it nice and slow. trying to block some of the light so you guys can actually there it's what i have so far <laughs> you guys are going oh my yeah but it's this tiny little corner and a pumpkin back there there's a pumpkin back there and a pumpkin over here so anyway yeah um that's what we're going to do on tuesday and like I said, if I have anything left, if I haven't finished it, if I have, I'll just I'll just pull something else out because I'm doing a whole bunch of contests. So. Oh, Mark has a channel. OK, cool. OK, well, I'm going to bid you all goodbye. I hope you all have a great rest of your weekend and um, stay well. Sleep well, rest well and all of that. And I thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up here today and for spending time with me. It was super fun. And I hope you guys all enjoyed it. So if you have any feedback for me, feedback away, send me a message. If you have suggestions about how I can do this better, I appreciate that too. Anything like that. So thank you. Hey, Emily. Yeah, you're, you're popping in at the end there. I hope the muffins are good because I can smell them from here. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> uh, okay i'll see you all later much love bye-bye